Hi, this is Nick Snyder doing my project video presentation on the history of machines during the Industrial Revolution. This is for the class ABE 170 and the date is January 4th, 2013. Uh, before I begin my presentation, I wanted to go over how the slides will be formatted. Initially, I'm going to present a little bit of background information about the Industrial Revolution and explain the time period as well as the significance of the Industrial Revolution as it had on society at the time. Next, I wanted to introduce an important individual inventor of a specific machine during the Industrial Revolution and give a brief background information about the specific individual in order to gain some insight as to how they got to the point of creating these magnificent machines. After producing or introducing the inventor, we will look at the machine itself and discuss its purpose as to how it came as well as to how it came to be. This will be done in order until we get through four inventors and their respective machines. Finally, we will take a look at how the invention and incorporation of these machines changed society, both for the better and worse. So some background information on the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the Industrial Revolution is said to have started in 1760 and lasted until 1840. These are general guidelines to the Industrial Revolution and, and different individuals have differing opinion as, opinions as to what the dates are or should be. There's a discrepancy in when the Industrial Revolution took place because of what we define the Industrial Revolution to be. Uh, that being a time frame in which there is a shift from predominantly agrarian rural societies in Europe and America to industrial and urban ones. This shift was significant as it allowed powered, specific machinery to operate in the place of human labor, leading to the multiple changes in society that occurred. And in essence, the Industrial Revolution is the bridge that connects some of our modern technologies with the way of life of the colonial era. So our first main inventor of the Industrial Revolution was James Hargreaves, who was born in 1720 in Blackburn, England. James was a bright individual who never had the opportunity to receive a formal education. Uh, regardless, Hargreaves taught himself everything he could about the engineering world of the time. As Hargreaves grew up, he took occupation as a weaver to provide for his family, which led him to create his invention, the spinning jenny. The story goes that his daughter Jenny, while James was at work, accidentally bumped over his loom. As the knocked over spindle continued to revolve on the spinning wheel, Hargreaves came up with the idea that an entire line of spindles could be worked off of one wheel. Thus, in 1764, Hargreaves formally created the first spinning jenny, which used multiple spindles that spun thread from a parallel set of rovings. Thus, by turning the wheel on the machine, Hargreaves could spin multiple threads at once. His invention was useful and drew a lot of attention towards him. Fearful of cheap competition, local spinners actually marched upon Hargreaves' house to destroy his machine, causing Hargreaves to delay patent patenting the spinning jenny until 1770. So as we stated before, the spinning jenny was formally created in 1764. This machine was unique as it used the multiple spindles to move threads from a parallel set of rovings. By spinning the wheel of the machine, the operator could increase their production rate of weaving tenfold. Uh, by the time Hargreaves actually got around to patenting this machine, thousands of others had mimicked it and had created it without any compensation to Hargreaves or his family. Uh, the next inventor on our list is Richard Arkwright, Sir Richard Arkwright, if you want to be particular, who was born in 1732 in Preston, England, the son of a tailor. Similarly to Hargreaves, Arkwright was a busy lad and didn't have time for schooling, other than being taught to read and write by his cousin. From an early age, Arkwright helped support himself by becoming an entrepreneur, selling wigs to make a living. Arkwright was actually inspired by Hargreaves and the spinning jenny, which is what led him to to get into mechanical engineering. Arkwright was so inspired that he actually made his own various improvements to Hargreaves' original spinning jenny. Arkwright's prosperity continued to rise and he eventually developed the water frame, which was a machine connected to a large wheel turned by water. The machine was harnessed to cogs inside a factory, which then made the machinery work. This invention led to the creation of multiple factories and is regarded by some as being the catalyst of the Industrial Revolution. The water frame was responsible for spinning cotton into yarn, much like the spinning jenny before it. What was significant about this machine, however, was the function in which it operated. 
The water frame was unique as it was the, the revolutionary invention that was the first powered, continuous textile machine that didn't require large human er interaction to function. In a world that had always functioned in, on one person making something by hand, this machine would have allowed for a natural process such as the running of river water to power it in place of human labor, which was a wonderful thing. Uh, our third important inventor of the Industrial Revolution was, I'm sure you've heard of him, James Watt. Watt was born on January 19, 1736 in Scotland. Growing up the son of a shipwright, it's easy to see how Watt was fascinated by engineering and ship guiding instruments. Watt was a bright individual and received thorough schooling, including time spent at Glasgow University in Scotland. It was, it was here that Watt was inspired to create the steam engine and was very passionate about his work. Watt even went as far as to hiding indoors for weeks at a time to avoid being drafted in Britain's war with France so he could work on his machine. Speci specialists of the Industrial Revolution credit Watt with creating the machine that impacted society the most during the Revolution. The steam engine was a magnificent machine for its era, and I believe is rightfully credited, credited with being the most important machine created during the Industrial Revolution. It functioned by turning water into steam, which under high pressure led into a cylinder and moved a piston to create energy. The steam engine was efficient as it allowed for a new way to power machinery that was transportable and did not require a flowing body of water to function. It was used to power mine lifts, factory machinery, and eventually the locomotive. Another fun fact about the steam engine is that it's responsible for helping to coin the term horsepower as the machine's power capacity was compared to horses at the time in order to increase its value to a potential buyer. Our fourth and final inventor of the time was Richard Trevithick, who was born in 1771 in the mining heartland of Cornwall, England. Like Watt before him, Trevithick did receive a formal education although one has to wonder how smooth of a process that must have been, as Trevithick was described as being a disobedient, slow, obstinate, spoiled boy, frequently absent and very inattentive. As true as this may have been, Trevithick turned out to be a brilliant engineer. He used the technology of those before him, most notably the work of Watt and the steam engine, to help him build his own invention, the locomotive. He began revolutionizing what some would call weak steam, which was used by James Watt, and used strong steam in Watt's engine to make the stronger and thus more useful machinery. After several failed attempts at creating a successful locomotive, he finally succeeded for Samuel Hobfrey in 1803, which was the first steam hauled train in the world. While it may not have been the simplest thing to create, the locomotive was thought to be a straightforward machine, according to Trevithick. Designed for a mining company owner by the name of Samuel Homfrey, the locomotive was the first steam hauled machinery, machinery of its kind and was useful for transportation and hauling of materials and goods. Trevithick transformed James Watt's steam engine which increased, er, and increased the pressure with which it processed and could withstand, and thus invented a higher capacity engine that was capable of moving the locomotive body. With this last machine, uh, we can see a major step forward toward modern machinery and the lifestyle changes that would follow also came with it. While there are both positives and negatives that went along with the machinery of the Industrial Revolution, I would venture to say that these machines had an overall positive effect on colonial England and America. Starting off with the benefits, we can initially say that there were major labor, major labor laws that were established due to the spinning jenny and the water frame being created because these machines forced workers into harsh working conditions inside of factories. Furthermore, we, we can see increased production of goods coming from factories as a result of the previously mentioned machines. For the spinning jenny and water frame would have increased production. The steam engine would have allowed for more factories to have been built away from running water. And the locomotive would have been able to haul more goods and materials faster than any other conventional method. One of the biggest benefits of the industrial machines was the concept of self-powered machinery, which I believe had a huge effect on the mindset of society in general. The idea of letting a machine perform labor in the place of human labor is a very modern concept and is the reason why we can call the industrial revolution a bridge between the gap of colonial and modern society. Finally, we would have seen a better quality of life overall for the people living at the time. Although there were these positives, it should be noted that these machines 
brought with them negative aspects. Machines took away jobs such as sewing and weaving from hardworking individuals at the time. Furthermore, increased productions from machines would have led to a declining wages of workers. As a result of urbanization that came with the machines of the Industrial Revolution, increased living expenses would have also plagued the people. So that's it. Hopefully you learned some interesting facts about the history of machines during the Industrial Revolution. This was Nick Snyder's presentation, and thank you for watching.